By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game of X points. I'm playing against Anders and he is bringing a blue and green deck to the table. I'm really excited to show you this deck. I've called it Reincarnation because he's playing with three of those in his deck. Very cool card. And he's actually won X points 31 with this deck. So I'm really looking forward to show you the power of this very creative build. And he is taking on my Elementals Volt deck. So that's red and blue, full of Elementals. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to remind you that we are playing according to the X points rules, meaning that you've got a 10 points list that you have to think about. And here you see the points list of 2024. So when you're building your deck, you gotta make sure you don't go over the 10 points. Now, if you wanna know more about this rule set, please check the description below for more information. In that same description, you can also find several timestamps, by the way. So if you wanna skip the deck deck, go to the de uh, to the match first, then check the decks. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to, uh, to do this is by checking out those timestamps. One timestamp uh, reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And before we start with the deck decks, I would first like to announce that this episode is sponsored. Yes, yes, this is sponsored by 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent Anders. Let's have a look. And here we see the list of under so blue green reincarnation and just one thing i'd like to point out before we start is that he's taken out the mana drain and replaced it for a counter spell so that it still falls in uh, the 10 points list of 2024 because there were some minor changes he's won the x points 31 with this list and i think it's super cool to see such a create creative brew do so well you know that's really a compliment to the format in my opinion. Uh, when we're looking at reincarnation, maybe that's the first card we have to discuss. It's a card you don't see often, and it's a card that kind of works differently than you think when you read it. So first of all, beautiful art. So it's two green and one for an instant. It says, choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, return a creature card from its owner's graveyard to the battlefield under the control of that creature's owner. Now, one of the cool things you can do with this, which is kind of crazy, is you can target the creature that you're targeting with reincarnation that's probably gonna die, right? Let's say you've got your Triskelion and your opponent is playing a Disenchant on your Trike. You can play a reincarnation on your Trike, right? You can also take the counters off, shoot it at your opponent, then it dies, and then you can also say, okay, this is the card that I wanna return to the graveyard for this creature that just died, which is the same creature. Can you still follow me? So in that way, it kind of works like a death ward, right? but better because it actually goes to the graveyard and then returns to the battlefield. So when it returns back to the battlefield, it means you get exactly, you get the three counters back. So that's kind of, you know, the trick in this deck. I mean, I still, it's, it's, it's good, it's fun that you can use this card this way, but I still think it's far from being overpowered, of course. I mean, you still need to have two green and one open. Uh, you need to have the right circumstances, but yeah, when it works, it is really cool. Um, but we have more going on in this deck than just that. For example, we've got the Sylvan Library Simbat combo. That's a combo I really like personally. Uh, so Sylvan Library is an enchantment from Legends, one green and one that reads, during your draw phase, you get to look at two extra cards. You get to look at three cards. You can put them in any order then put them back on top of your deck and draw the card for turn. Now, if you want to, you can also draw an extra card, but you have to pay four life every time you do it. And you can only do that for two extra cards. So you can pay eight life and draw three cards basically. That is pretty good by itself. Obviously, you know, there isn't a lot of card selection in old school, but it gets really broken when you've got Simbat because Simbat is this 1-1 creature for one blue and one that reads tap, draw a card, discard the card if it's not a land card. So with Sylvan, you can put it in an order that you know that a land card is on top and then you can use Simbat and draw a card. So basically you're drawing two cards without paying the extra four life. So that is really powerful. Another nice thing you can do with Simbat is of course, if there's a card on top that you don't want to have, so you can just 
discard it because you don't want it and put it into your graveyard. Maybe you want it in your graveyard for a reason, like doing something with reincarnation. We also see a recall in here. So, you know, they're, they're, they're just these little fun things. And I think if you look at the rest of the deck, you just see the good cards, right? That you kind of would expect you to play when you're playing uh, blue green. You know, we see Psionic Blast, Control Magic, Copy Artifact, of course, being really good with the Triskelions in the deck. Uh, we're seeing Ancestral Recall, like that is a high pointed card, right? So that is that is a big decision to make in X points. Uh, but yeah, the card is just so good that I understand. We see Mahamoti Jin, the 5-6 flyer, that's pretty cool. We also see a Tetravus in the deck, which I think again goes really well with Reincarnation if you time it right. We see the Scavenger Folks, which is just so good at destroying any artifact threat, so it makes sense it's in there. So yeah, I mean overall, this deck, it looks strong, but to be honest, I'm surprised that it's won the X points because some of those decks in there are just so mean and lean and like they're they're so efficiently built. Whereas in this deck, you would think by looking at it at first glance, you need certain circumstances to work together and then it's very powerful. The problem is usually that you have one part of the puzzle, but you don't have the other and your opponent is playing such an efficient deck that you just don't have the time to get into that. But the fact that Anders has, you know, won the whole monthly tournament with this kind of shows that... It can be done and that is probably also stronger that I think when I'm looking at this in first glance, you know, so that's really interesting. So I can't wait to play against it and kind of see its true power and potential. Talking about that, let's take a look at my deck Elementals Vault. And here we see my deck Elementals Vault. Now this deck has been on the channel a few times and I just love to play with Elementals, right? I mean, when I was a young Timmy, I loved to cast like Earth Elemental and Air Elemental and Water Elemental, and especially Fire Elemental. I mean, they're just really cool cards and when you cast them, it's like you're the, you're the wizard of the elements, right? Um, now I did make a few changes for X points because I've taken out the energy fluxes. I mean, in a field like X points, you don't have a lot of decks that run all the Moxen because they're, you know, pointed cards. So the energy flux is not that good in this field. And also I've taken out an Unsummon. And what I've put in is I've put in um, an Hercules Recall because I think it's quite nice with the Mana Volts. And also when I'm playing against an Artifact Heavy deck, it could be useful. Obviously, it's not going to work very well against Anders and his Triskelions. But yeah, maybe I can use it on my own Mana Volts. I'm probably going to board it out after game one. And I've put in a Shatterstorm. Now that's a card that could be useful against Anders. Um, and then uh, instead of the unsummon, I've put in a time elemental because, of course, that's the last elemental that's not in here. Maybe it should have been in here. Um, but I think time elemental strategically doesn't really fit this deck much. But then again, kind of as a late game trick, it's kind of nice. So time elemental, of course, uh, one blue and two for an O2 creature. And for two blue and two, you can tap it and then you can return any permanent uh, back to hand. So it can be really, really powerful if you can get into a position in the game where you can actually use it and it sticks to the board, it's not killed or anything, you know? So it's it's tricky, but when it's there and it, it's, it's past its summoning sickness stage, it can be extremely annoying for the opponent and very powerful for uh, for the wizard that uh, has control of it. Um, now, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, the strategy here is kind of, you know, straightforward, right? I want to drop a mana vault turn one and turn two, try to uh, play one of my bigger elementals. Now there is a side note though, as I'm playing this deck more often, um, it's it's really interesting to kind of see, okay, when are you going to go all in? When are you going to tap out and play that earth elemental, for example? And it really depends on the type of opponent that you have. For example, today when I'm playing against blue and green, I know there's no swords to plowshare. So that makes a big difference in my strategy. But I do know that I probably have to think about control magic. So you're making different choices uh, depending on the opponent that you play against. For example, when I'm playing against a Sword to Plowshares deck, I'm probably not going to cast my elemental at turn two, but I'm going to wait until I can cast my elemental with counterspell backup, right? So it's, it's influenced by the type of opponent that you have, where, I mean, in the past, I used to play this a bit more like straightforward and think, you know what, if he has it, he has it, but if he doesn't have it, I can just start dealing a lot of damage. Now, that is something to say for, but the result of that strategy was that in a lot of cases, because so many people play Swords to Plowshares, my creature just got killed straight away and I ended up with a tap mana vault hurting me and he only had to invest one white mana at instant speed. So, And also I couldn't then counter the following turn because I was tapped out. So it, it just didn't work really well for me. So I thought, okay, I have to think differently about this strategy, even though it's a lot of fun to slam an elemental turn two, that's what you want to do in life. It's not always the best thing to do in life. And I'm sure if you're one of those mono black players that is used to playing Dark Ritual, Hypnotic Spectre, it's the same story, right? If your opponent has a bolt 
or um, uh, short supply shares, it, it can just really backfire on you. And then I have to make this note though that I think Hypnotic Spectre is more powerful because it means card disadvantage on the long run for your opponent. Whereas with an Elemental, yes, it deals more damage, but I mean, it doesn't take any cards away from your opponent. And of course, card advantage, card disadvantage, it's really what the game is all about in, in a lot of cases. So yeah, this is um, just a really fun deck to play with. I have played this deck at several old school events and it's a completely reprint deck, which is something I also like. And it's just really just fun to, to try to beat the power decks and I have beaten some power decks. So it's 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 pretty good, you know, it's fun to play with. Usually if you take this to a tournament, you go like two, three or sometimes three, two, that's about the max that you can squeeze out of the deck, but it's just a cool feeling to cast these elemental creatures, you know, I just, I really enjoy it. Anyway, um, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of Anders and that means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game uh, number one, here we go. On the left, we have Anders with his blue-green reincarnation deck. And on the right, I'm playing with my blue-red elementals deck, starting here with an island for the both of us. And let's see what we can do. Can I find a mana vault? Have like a quickly elemental out or not. There's a city of brass here by Anders. So he's taking a damage and there's a Simbat. So I can start digging for lands. There's a second blue for me. So I've got counter magic up. So both of us playing with a full play set of counter spells. So maybe we're into some serious counter wars here. Let's see what Anders can do here at turn three. There's a forest. Is he going to swing in with the Simbat? Nope, he's not. He's going to pass. So I guess he's going to use it on my end step. And I'm also a big fan of Simbat, by the way. But usually when I use it, it ends up uh, badly. Anyway, there's a Mana Vault. Okay, so I could consider casting, for example, an Air Elemental or a Water Elemental if I have one. Decide not to. I think that makes sense because, of course, Anders is playing with blue. So you don't want to run into a counter spell. And here we see Anders milling away his own Scavenger Folk. So trying to get some value. And he is going to use it again before he draws. Okay, and there's a land. He's going to draw that land and then he's going to draw for turn. Playing a Tropical Island. That's the land he just found passing the turn. So he did get some value out of that uh, Simbat. And let me know in the comments if you play Simbat, would you also use it if you don't know what's on top of your library? And this is going to be interesting here for me now, by the way, playing my second red. Am I going to cast an air elemental or a fire elemental? Two red. Ooh, an earthquake for one. So I'm really valuing that Simbat. Really want to get rid of it here. There's a counter spell though. And now I could consider casting an elemental. Look at that. I'm doing that knowing that Anders can no longer counter. So playing out my air elemental. And passing the turn. Now the risk here though is if Anders has, for example, a control magic, that will be pretty deadly for me. Let's see what he can do. There's another city of brass. He's going to use the Simbat. Try to find some more lands. Oh, control magic gone. That would have been perfect for Anders here. Then he could steal my, uh, my air elemental. And there's not much that I can do about it now because I'm tapped out. Of course, he wouldn't draw into the Control Magic until next turn, but still, it's a very powerful card, I feel, in this matchup. I'm also playing with two Control Magics main, by the way, so we could also have a Control Magic battle. After sideboarding, perhaps, when the Red Elemental Blast and Blue Elemental Blast com comes in, we're going to see something else. Oh, we already had a Control Magic. Look at that. Yeah, this is, this is perfect for Anders, really, you know. I'm investing my Mana Vault mana into this, and he's just stealing it, so... Now I'm probably going to take a damage from the Vault. And let's see if I have a Control Magic to steal it back. I think that's my best option. Or you get a two for one scenario where I have to play, for example, a Fireball on it. I am tapping five. Okay, I'm playing another Air Elemental. I mean, it could be worse. Like doing nothing would have been worse, but it's not perfect in, uh, in any means. Because now next turn, Anders can, of course, attack with, you know, the stolen Air Elemental. And I have to make a difficult decision. He is first going to use... Ooh, look, another land. So... And he's found two lands out of it. It's not too bad. He's going to draw a card here. There's the land. So he's got six. Are we going to see a Triskelion? Playing with uh, four Triskelion in the deck. Ooh, there's a Sylvan. Yeah, now that Simbat is going to be really good 
There's a regrowth as well. What is he going to get back? Oh, no. Counterspell. Oh. I mean, this game is slipping away from me. Like, the moment that Control Magic hit the board. Oh, man. That was concerning. Look at this. Now I'm investing four mana, it seems, to untap the vault. I mean, or am I? This is a tough decision to make. You simply don't know what's on top of the library and you're kind of canceling yourself out. Unless, of course, I have another land in hand. I could still cast a, an elemental. But I know that Anders also has that counterspell in hand. This is really tough. Am I just going to play into the counterspell just to have this idea? Okay, then at least it's out of his hand. I mean, he's got six mana. He's not going to tap out that quickly anymore. And I guess I'm really in the tank here. I mean, this is not a scenario I like. Look at that passing the turn. Oh, no. This is so bad. Because now he can do the Sylvan Library Simbat trick. Oh, man. I'm not happy. I'm happy for Anders. It's cool to see, you know, the, the trick working. But, yeah, this is kind of the worst case scenario here for me, of course. Anders having that control magic exactly at the right time. Or else we would have had a completely different game one. Let's see if there's something that I can do, though. He's going to tap two first. There's another Simbat hitting the board. Oh, I really could have used that Earthquake now. And there's just the Pasha. Yeah, Anders, of course, is going to keep the two blue open because of the counter spell in hand. I've got a lot of mana. I mean, at least that's one thing. Maybe if I can find another counter spell, I can play something out with counter backup. I mean, it looks like that's what I'm going to do. You're tapping five. Okay, there's a fire elemental. Five, four. Okay, this is something, you know. I mean, I've got a lot of really big creatures in this deck. So look at me go here, going for the aggressive strategy. And yeah, of course, Anders is going to block. Like, this is a great deal for him, right? One control magic basically killed two air elementals. Now, that's a lot of value. But also for me, I don't have the luxury to wait for another solution because Anders is simply drawing too many cards with his, with his Simbat uh, Sylvan combo here. So I have to put some pressure on. And interestingly here, of course, Anders didn't take the, the bait, by the way, trying to counter the Fire Elementals, really choosing his moments uh, with that because uh, he still has a counter spell in hand. So that was interesting. Playing a Soul Ring here. Going to tap four, six. Okay, there's the... Oh, no! Wow! It, there's the Mahamoti. So he probably wanted to protect the Modi. There you see a counter spell. He's probably going to counter the counter spell here. Yeah, this is really good magic by uh, by Anders, you know. Having the patience to keep that counter spell to use it at the right time, which is right now, making sure the uh, Mahamoto resolves. And I think again, if I if I have a control magic here, that can really really change the game. Untapping the mana vault, there's a volcanic island, one card in hand. Oh, it looks like I'm just passing the turn. Oh man, that is really bad. Yeah, this is a very bad scenario for me. I, th I think kind of my, my out here would have been Control Magic on the Modi, also because he was tapped out, but didn't happen, passing the turn back to Anders. I mean, I'm still on 19, so I can take like four hits before I die, but yeah, it's not looking great. And Anders here tapping five, it seems six. Are we now going to see a trike? Yep, there's a Triskelion, so even more pressure from Anders. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking great for me. Gonna take a damage here. Oh, there's a copy. Yes, 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 yes. So I think I'm just kind of now trying to think what are cards that can save me out of this situation. I still think Control Magic is the main card to go for. Um, another thing that would be good here is that one Shatterstorm. Kind of forcing Anders to do something with his Triskelions. But those are kind of the two cards that can do the most damage, I feel. Okay, I'm going to tap two red. Volcanic Island, okay. What's the plan? Maybe like a huge Fireball would kind of be okay. Do I have enough mana then to end... Do the Modi and another creature? I don't think so. Anyway, tapping three. Wonder what it could be. Maybe a Wheel of Fortune? Changing my mind. Tapping the Vault. Okay. Ooh, there's a Blood Moon. Okay. Okay. 
So really thinking about what I'm doing. Got one man of flowing still, so I'm tapping four. Okay, there's a Shatter Storm. Okay, so that's 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 at least a card that can kind of help me here. And I think Anders is probably going to kill my Fire Elemental and then deal two damage to me as well. Which is a pretty good deal for him, you know? It's not like ideal, but yeah, the pressure is real. Going to drop to 12. No cards in hand anymore. Oh, <laughs> this is bad. This is so bad. But I, I've kind of felt like I had to play the Shatterstorm. And I, yeah, I think my best bet here is to maybe top deck like a Wheel of Fortune and just hope to kind of draw the nuts. Control Magic still looks good. Actually better now on this board than it did before the Shatterstorm. So I'm definitely going to take another hit from the Modi. I would drop to seven. He can also attack with the two Simbats, of course. I would drop to five. That would be worth it for him, because then I would only have one more turn instead of two. But yeah, this is a difficult scenario for me. Also, I feel that the Blood Moon is not just doing a lot against Anders. I mean, it's taking out the City of Brass mana, but he already has all the mana he needs. Also, the Tropical Island, of course, is a mountain. Anyway, it looks like we're chatting a little bit about the scenario here. And uh, one card in hand here for Anders. He is going to use the Simbat on end step. That's another Simbat. Yeah, and this is really nice about the Simbat as well. Also, if you don't have a land on top, you can just put the cards on top that you don't need and kind of mill them away to make sure that you see new cards with the Sylvan. So Syl Sylvan Simbat is always a good combination, you know, even if, if you cannot find the extra lands. Ooh, he's going to draw an extra card. You're going to go to 11. So he's very... Um, confident here that he's going to take the win. And of course, there's no pressure on the board from my side. I've got nothing in hand, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Throwing away a trike. Get a counter spell. Yeah, yeah, that's difficult. It's the, it's the good thing to do, but for some reason, I hardly ever do it. But look at that, though. I mean, he doesn't have two blue, though, to counter. So that's something for me. I really, 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 really need that control magic. Can we find it? One card in hand. Passing the turn. Okay, I'm acting. Yeah, I don't have it, I think. Just going to wait and see what Anders is going to do. It's going to draw two cards, two lands. Nice. That is value. It's really nice to see. And now I'm dead, I assume. Tapping one, there's a yeah, lightning bolt, it's not going to do anything. Yep, that's it. Game number one, won by Anders, and I have to say his deck's looking very impressive. I'm going to dig into my sideboard, and I'm, uh, I'm going to try to do better in game number two. Game number two, here we go, and look at that. I'm taking a mulligan. Oh, that's not great. Need to win this to stay in it. This is not a great start, but okay. Hopefully this new hand is good. Starting with an island, passing the turn. So no mana vault turn one. There is a turn one play from under Scavenger Folk. Oh, that's actually pretty good against my mana vault strategy. So yeah, that's uh, not great. Anyway, second island, passing the turn. Really curious to see how this uh, second game is going to pan out. Also to see what kind of cards we've boarded in. Like Anders can go for Blue Elemental Blast, for example. I'm sure I'm going to play with Red Elemental Blast also because of that uh, control magic that I saw in game one. Playing a City of Brass here, taking the damage uh, from the Scavenger Folk on 19, passing turn. Let's take a look. There's another island. Are we going to see a Simbat, for example? First, there's the attack. And it's going to tap two. Okay, there's the Simbat. So we've got Simbat again. Am I going to allow this? That's another question. I mean, the thing is, I can also consider trying to counter away the Sylvan, for example. Ooh, do I have a Bolt, maybe? Yep, there's the Bolt. Gonna go to 17. Oh, Blue Elemental Blast, though. Oh, <laughs> that is good. Protecting the Simbat. So that's the answer on my question, if he boarded those in. He did. And I mean, I think Simbat and Scavenger Folk are, of course, my best targets. Now, Anders is now tapped out, by the way. So if I have a Mana Vault, I could go Mana Vault into... An, an elemental, of course, again, then taking the risk that maybe I'm going to run into... Uh, ooh, tapping four. What am I going to do? Control magic. Okay, am I going to steal the Simbat? 
I could also steal the scavenger folk because I can use it to destroy like a trike, for example. But stealing here the Simbat, this could mean a few things. First of all, I'm taking away an important combo piece for him, right? That Simbat was on fire in the first game. Oh, he's going to steal it back. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, this is funny. Okay. Like this big fight over the Simbat. So this is how important the Simbat is for Anders, I guess. And what I wanted to say is it, it can, can be good in two ways, right? I'm stealing it from him because he, he really wants to use it with the Sylvan. It's an important piece in his deck. Oh, Red Elemental Blast. Am I going to kill the Simbat? No, I'm going to steal it back, of course. <laughs> this is so funny. It's back on my side of the board. Uh, ridiculous. And of course, it can also be good for me if I'm like tight on mana, it can help me to find the lands I need. I think I missed the land drop, by the way. So that could be the case here. Oh, there's a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip on the Control Magic? He is going to flip on the Control Magic. Oh, this is so funny. The ongoing battle here for the, for the Simbat. Oh, yep, it's a hit. It's a hit. Yeah, you always hope that he's going to miss, but... It didn't happen, unfortunately for me. So I'm going to drop to 14. Wow. And he's got the same bat back again. Like, it's just, he constantly has answers. I'm going to tap 5. Okay, Air Elemental. I'm going to drop to 13. I mean, I feel like I'm quite low as well. That's because of the City of Brass, of course, and because of that one Scavenger Folk that just kept attacking all the time. But Anders now has his same bat back. I'm on 13. He's on 20. I... It kind of feels bad, to be honest. I've used, wasted so many resources. Well, wasted is a big word because Anders had to use his resources as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's got the Simbat and I'm down a Red Elemental Blast and a Control Magic. And, an, and, and a Lightning Bolt, of course. Ooh, look at that. He's milling away his own Sylvan. That's the card he needed. So hopefully I can be a little bit more lucky now from now on. Anyway, there's the try hitting the board. Anders only one card in hand, so that's something. I've got more cards than him. Going to tap five, probably more elementals. Another air elemental. Okay, it's looking good. As long as Anders doesn't have like a control magic, I feel kind of good. Or of course a Modi. Anyway, attacking here for four, putting Anders on 16, passing the turn. And Anders here again using the Simbat. Counterspell gone. Yeah, this is the thing with Simbat. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And I think especially the Sylvan must have hurt because once you have... Oh, there's a Sylvan. Okay, so... Using the same, but got him one step closer to the Sylvan. And now he's got it. And, and yeah, this is tough for me because, I mean, I remember game one and that sylvan Simbad combo was so good. Oh, there he's going to attack with both here. Ooh, that is gutsy. I'm going to trade here. Are we going to see a reincarnation? No, we're not. Somewhere I was expecting a reincarnation. I mean, that scavenger folk is very brave, by the way. <laughs> like, it keeps attacking every single turn. And I'm on 12 now, and Anders is also on 12. So we're both on 12. Playing an unsummon on the Simbat. Yeah, that makes sense. So probably boarded in the unsummon from the sideboard. It's now in my sideboard, I believe, the unsummon. So I took it out of my main, replaced it with the time elemental. But yeah, this makes sense, this play, because now he cannot use the Simbat straight away to get card advantage next turn. So I'm kind of happy, actually, with this play. I think it's a good one. And Anders here looking at the cards. Ooh, does he have a recall? I'm afraid he does, because he's going through it. That's not a good sign. What could he get back with a recall? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. He's just going to draw one card for turn. Going to tap three, maybe a recall for one. Yeah, recall for one. So chucking away the City of Brass. And there's a counter spell from my side. So I'm going to counter. He does keep the City of Brass, I believe, by the way. If I'm not mistaken, let me know in the comments below. Going to untap here. I mean, it, I'm sure it doesn't have a huge impact on the game, but still, you know, it's a card attacking for four here. So Anders going to go to 8. So as long as I can keep this Air Elemental around, I'm good. 
I mean, one of the things that I could have done, by the way, is just allow others to get back, for example, control magic, counter away to control magic. But I just want to be absolutely certain that that didn't happen. Oh, look at that, finding the land. Yeah, of course, he knew it was on there probably because of the, uh, the Sylvan. So he's got three cards to look at. I mean, he still has two turns and he can dig pretty deep. I'm not that confident, to be honest. There's the attack. That's Kevin, your folk, man. That's doing work. That is impressive. How many, how many points of damage did that one scavenger folk do? Six, maybe? It's been attacking every single turn. It's like insane. An attack here. And also with the Pendlehaven, it uh, gets stronger. I kind of missed that there, but there's the Pendlehaven on the side of Anders. Going to tap five. Are we going to see another one? Going to tap. Oh, going to tap. Oh, is that a fireball for the game? A fireball for five. Do we have a counter spell? Red Elemental Blast, perhaps? Blue Elemental Blast, I mean. No, we don't. Okay, winning. Game number two here. I have to say, I was a little bit nervous at a certain point after losing that big battle over the Simbat. But, um, yeah, whew, won it. But uh, it wasn't easy. At least it's a 1-1. And that means we are going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. It's everybody's game still. Honors, of course, on the play here. So that's a, that's a small plus, of course, especially playing counter magic. You know, you get into your counter, uh, your double blue sooner, you know, one step before the opponent. So then you should be able to have counter uh, spells online. Let's see what I'm going to do here, starting with a mountain, tapping the mountain. Ooh, soul ring. Tapping the soul ring. There's a mana vault. Oh, the luxury. I am getting a mana burn, though. We are playing Atlantic rules, so that's with mana burn. So I got to take the burn, but I mean, it's looking pretty good. Then the big question is, okay, next turn, what am I going to do? Am I going to play an elemental? That's always the big question, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's, it feels so risky against Anders, especially if he's going to play a second blue here. There is that second blue. I mean, if he has, okay, it's going to tap it for a soaring. So I know he cannot counter, but then still, if I play it out, so I'm, I don't have to worry about counter spell. What if he has another control magic? Then again, maybe I've read Elemental Blast in hand. Let's see. Anyway, tapping five. Going to go here for the Fire Elemental. And pass the turn back, I assume. Exactly. And let's see if Anders has that control magic. Tension, tension, tension. Drawing a card for turn. Does he have the control magic? If he doesn't, I can swing in. Tapping four, though. Oh, there's the control magic probably boarded in more control magics i mean control magic is so good against my deck as i'm playing with these nice big juicy creatures and despite the fact that i have control magics as well it still kind of feels like it's better for my opponent i always have a nice target for my opponent it seems so do i have a red elemental blast here that's the question gonna go here with the blue mana I mean, the problem also of my deck is I can also decide not to play out the creatures if I don't have, like, protection from a counterspell or anything. But then I'm slowing myself down so much and I'm not really doing what my deck wants to do. So I, you know, for example, in this case, I did have a serious look at the counter magic and I knew he couldn't counter. So I kind of decided to take the risk. Okay, this is pretty decent, this time elemental. I do need a second blue to use it, though. But for two blue and two, I can return uh, any any permanent to its owner's hand. So what I could do, of course, is return the uh, fire elemental to my hand and then the control magic ends up in the graveyard. So if my time elemental can survive and if I can find another land, that would be great. I'm gonna first take five from my own fire elemental. That feels so bad. Oh, control magic, such a good card. It's gonna tap out. Oh no, are we gonna see a trike? Oh, the trike is probably going to kill my, my time elemental here. He kind of has to. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is bad. I need, I just need, I need a little bit of luck here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I boarded in extra on summons and red elemental blasts against the control magics of Anders. But the thing is with magic, and I'm sure you agree, sometimes even though you've done everything right and you should see these cards statistically, you don't see them. You know, it, it has happened more than once. Anyway, taking a damage from the Vault, going to go to 12. Let's hope that I can find Red Elemental Blast, Unsummon, or at least a big Elemental. I've got enough mana to cast it. Do I have it? That's the question. 
Or maybe I've got, of course, a water elemental in hand or an air elemental and I don't have that second blue. That could be a scenario as well. Okay, there's a City of Brass, so that can remedy that. At least now I can make that second blue. Do I have a Control Magic back? That's also a good question. I mean, if I do, I feel like I should use it. Or not changing my mind, or am I gonna tap five? Earthquake for five. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. Again, it's not great, because I'm, and I'm hurting myself. And I'm, uh... I'm killing my own fire element, but it's better than taking another hit of five. So I'm going to drop to seven here. And Anders will also drop, take five points of damage. So he should go to 14. Or was it... Um... Oh, it was one of four, of course, because fire element is a toughness of four. So Anders here should drop to 15. Tapping two. There's a regrowth. Oh, man. Getting back here, the Triskelion, okay. I think, I think the, maybe the Control Magic would have bothered me more, strangely enough. So I'm gonna untap the Mana Vault here, because I'm on seven, I'm so low. Yeah, I guess a trike makes sense, by the way, because I am so low. If he's got like a copy artifact, I'm almost dead. And then I can no longer use the City of Brass. Yeah, this is tough. I'm gonna draw my card for turn. I mean, it just feels like Anders has more weapons against me that he can hurt me more than I can hurt him. That's kind of the feeling I've, I've, I'm having this entire match. Passing the turn. Hopefully I've got counter magic here to counter that Triskelion. and he's going to tap the six, of course. There's the trike. Do I have an answer? Come on, play something. Do something. No, I don't. Oh, this is so annoying, because even if I have a removal spell now, he can still hurt me for three, put me on four. That's not where you want to be. Remember, Anders is also playing with Psionic Blasts. Going to tap for Control Magic, probably. Exactly. Okay, so then he's going to shoot me for two. Or, you know, does he have... No, he doesn't have Red Elemental Blast, right? Okay, so he's going to kill his own trike, going to shoot me for two. So I'm going to go down to five. Yeah, that's the thing with these Triskelions, you know, Control Magic is kind of now a removal spell that hurts me, you know, and it's, it's for its sorcery speed, it's just not where you want to be in life. But hey, it's better than taking a hit, I'm on 5, I'm still in it, and I believe Under should be on 15 instead of 19. Doesn't make a big difference though, but it could later in the match, but I first need to try to survive and stabilize here. Two cards in hand, Under's having three cards in hand. Passing the turn. Okay, that's a good sign for me. Three cards. I've got so much mana. I mean, I should be able to do something. No passing the turn, though. So we're both kind of top decking, trying to find threats, perhaps. Tapping three. What are we going to see for three? There's a recall. Am I going to counter the recall? That's the question. I mean, if I have a red elemental blast, could consider firing it off here. Tapping a red, though. I mean, it's got to be a red elemental blast, right? Really taking my time. Decide. Am I deciding not to? I wonder if this is the right decision. I mean, it can go for trike. I cannot counter a trike. How does this work? I feel like I should... Okay, there's a blue elemental blast. Okay. Because I feel I have to... Dis... I mean, I have to decide to counter the recall before I know what he's going to target, right? Or am I missing something? Anyways, getting back the, the Triskelion. And he played a blue elemental blast on my red elemental blast. Another island. Look at all my lands. I get so much mana. I hope I got like an answer for the trike. If if it if it resolves and then I have an answer on it, it's already too late, right? Well, I mean not too late, but he will put me on two in that case. Oh, it's looking bad. It's looking bad. I'm like on the defense this entire match. Very, very annoying for me. There's the Simbat hitting the board. At least it's not the trike. So maybe Anders here is kind of testing the water, saying, you know. If you have something, 
Is it worth it to use against the same bet? But of course, I'm not going to. If I have a counter spell, I'm going to try to use it against the trike. And perhaps Anders is also waiting until he finds like a counter spell to protect the trike and has enough mana to do both. Right? Because now he could play out a Triskelion and keep mana open to protect it with counter magic. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen here. It's going to play the trike. If I have counter spell, I'm going to counter it and he's going to counter the counter spell. That, that's what I expect to happen here. Three cards in hand for me. And look at that. I don't even have a counter spell. Oh, man. This is so bad. There's a volcanic island. More mana. I don't need more mana, man. Okay, there's a bolt. Probably going to point this bolt towards the uh, Triskelion. Going to try to fork it. There's a counter spell, though. Ah, oh, yeah. That is probably the end of the road for me here. That means three damage. On the trike, but yeah, it's not going to be enough. The fork is getting countered. One more card in hand, probably a land. You know, drawing so much lands here in uh, in game number three. Passing the turn. Oh man, am I dead? That's the question. There is a uh, Sylvan. Doesn't really matter because I think I'm not going to survive. Do I have an unsummon? Perhaps. Nope. Another land, an island here. Yeah, end of the line, but it has been really, really, really cool games. And I have to say, Anders, I'm impressed with your deck. And um, I can now see how you've uh, won that uh, X Points tournament here. So very, very cool deck, really nice. We didn't see Reincarnation, though. I mean, that's a little disappointing, but yeah, it is what it is. Maybe we have to play another game in the future uh, where you can... Uh, show your reincarnation magic let me know in the comments below if you would uh, like me to ask Anders to play another match with this deck so we can see reincarnation maybe in action that would be really nice anyway for now thank you very much for watching and before you go please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and talking about moving forward you can also become a patron of the show so if you enjoy what i do please consider supporting the channel financially as well check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for all the information about our Patreon program. And uh, one of the nice perks is when you become a patron of the show is that your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll.